hello and welcome back so this is the Caracal Navy and I did get this ship for several reasons now first reason is this ship is excellent for PvP and this ship is excellent for PvE and it is excellent for these storyline missions that can be quite tricky and of course I do have the missile skills that are required to make this ship work nicely so that's also a bonus and Overall, I am very satisfied with this ship and I'll be trying out all of the Navy ships in time. Now, I'll be using this ship mostly for the missions and of course for PvE. And of course, I'll be also flying this ship in PvP very soon, just to see how it will how it will perform in that environment. And so overall, I do like the design of the ship. It looks very nice, especially the camouflage. The camouflage looks looks very good. Now, on to the skills. Now, for these ships, you are going to need the advanced skills. And thankfully, if you have Omega right now, and if you skill uh, for these skills, even after your Omega expires, you, your skills are going to be in effect, so you are still going to retain the effects of uh, most of these ships which I think is very interesting and it is very good that the developers did that but overall the skills for this ship are focused and oriented for combat and they are going to help this ship to be very good at most of the at most of combat in the game now I'll be showing you what I have equipped on this ship and I'll be also talking about other fits that you can use uh, for the ship. Now at the moment I do have rapid missiles, although I do also have faction torpedo launchers, but they currently are not in this station. But this ship works the best with rapid missile launchers, they have decent range, they have medium range, you can make them to have around 40 km range, which is decent. But with the Mark V's I do have around 30 km range, if I had faction rapid missile launchers, I'd be having around 40 km range with these, and of course if I had the missile guidance system, uh, a better one of course, I'll be also, I'll, I'd also have a lot better range. Now for the storyline missions you want to have a very long range, and for these missions you should use the classic missiles, which are long range weapons, and they are going to have twice more range as compared with the rapid missile launchers system and of course I'll be working to get faction missile launchers for this for this ship but overall for the advanced missions and for the more rare advanced missions this ship will perform very nice and it does get the job done you can even do the storyline missions with this exact fit and I'll be I'll be doing that in one of the next videos since I do want to show you how this ship is performing in such environment. Now for the medium slots I do have a neutralizer and I do have a Nosferatu combined with a Webifer and I do recommend in PvP that you use a disruptor combined with two neutralizers or a disruptor combined with one Nosferatu plus one neutralizer since the neutralizer will be very effective for frigates and for destroyers and of course the Nosferatu will be very effective against most ships that you will fight and for the drone slot you want to have medium drones but I'll be using small drones because I still did not get any medium drone which is kind of funny for the low slots I do have a MVD combined with a shield booster and combined with uh, the missile guidance system plus a capacitor battery in the low slots for PvP you want to replace the shield booster with a ballistic control which will improve the missile range and it will also improve uh, the missile speed, it will improve the missile rate of fire and overall it is nice for for PvP and for other combat focused objectives and I think I'll be also leaving the capacitor battery even for PvP but if you don't like the capacitor battery you can also replace that with either another ballistic control or you can replace it with another missile guidance system to further increase the range of this ship or you can also go for a full tank which will also work but for PvE I'll be mostly using this fit since this fit is a more balanced fit between DPS and 
between tank since in missions you want to focus also on the tanking especially in the storyline missions since they can be very difficult or you want to focus on the ship's range to shoot from a very far distance far away safe from the enemy weaponry well i think it will be time to jump in the first mission and well it will be time to see how this ship will perform okay well let's now this is the mission that I'll be doing. It is a very it is a very interesting mission and it does give you 4.5 million isk, which is quite quite uh, a mouth and you can expect fearsome resistance in these rare missions. Now, I did you I used to do these missions in a Talar sniper and that ship is very nice and I do see kills being done with the Talvar Sniper and I am glad to see that that ship is being used and that ship is indeed very very interesting to play. Now I did warp in here first with the rapid missile launchers so that I can show you the performance of the ship in the close range and for these missions I do prefer to use the long range missiles because they are safer and since this ship isn't quite focused on tanking it is more of a balanced fit, but it is more focused on range. Approaching these rats is kind of a risky thing. Now, with these missions you can also expect to have faction and elite ships to appear. And these ships can be difficult and they can be tricky. Now, the ones that you have to be mostly careful around are the elite cruisers and battle cruisers since they can be very fast and in a lot of cases they are going to be faster than your ship and of course they are going to carry very powerful weapons which can cause big problems now my dps currently is around 250 if i did use the torpedoes the faction torpedoes that i have my dps would be around 350 or around 450 it depends and torpedoes are nice you can use them but they are going to be very inefficient and ineffective against smaller ships like like frigates and destroyers since they are rather slow and their explosion velocity is also slow and torpedoes aren't going to be used on the ship a lot but of course in special operations or if you are going to shoot larger targets like battle cruisers cruisers and battleships then using torpedoes is a good idea since they have very fast reloads they also have very fast activation time and they do quite a bit of damage and they do have a lot of dps and that makes them perfect against these larger targets like the cruisers, battlecruisers and of course battleships and of course in the future carriers, dreadnoughts and super carriers and well if they make titans then against those torpedoes are going to be good. So I did warp out and I did replace the rapid missile launchers with, a, with these classic missiles since they have better range but of course the rapid missiles do have a very fast activation time and they have a faster rate of fire which makes them perfect for the other missions and of course which makes them perfect for dp uh, for pvp as for these missile launchers the classic ones those with long range they're excellent at these more difficult missions and of course they are excellent at the storyline missions with these missiles you are going to experience a longer reload you are also going to, to experience a longer activation time and that will result in a slower rate of fire but in return you are going to have a longer range and you are going to be safe from the enemy fire now that also comes with uh, another price and that means these missiles aren't that good against frigates. The elite frigates are going to appear to be tanky because they aren't going to be taking a lot of damage from the normal missiles 
and that might be a problem, but eventually you can just wait, uh, wait the do um, weapon to destroy the frigate, since it only takes some time to shoot down a elite frigate, and that's the that's like the biggest problem that you might encounter using these these missiles. Now, of course, if you have a ballistic control combined with the missile guidance system then your damage output on these missiles is going to be better of course but they are still going to do little damage to the frigates and against frigates it does take some time especially against the elite frigates which of course again is better than to risk losing your ship in a close range combat now speaking of these missiles rapid missiles would do a lot more damage to the frigates because they are faster and they have they have faster explosions and they will generally do a lot more damage to the frigates and not to mention they are also going to have a higher rate of fire which means that the missiles are going to hit the target a lot more often by default which is interesting now the storyline missions are going to be interesting and for the more advanced ones, for the tier 9 and for the tier 10s, I will need to have the faction equipment because I do need the 80 or 90 km range that this ship can do because I'm going to fight battleships, battlecruisers and other very dangerous ships that do carry very dangerous weaponry that can potentially destroy this Caracal Navy very quickly. So I'll have to be very careful around these tier 8, tier 9 and tier 10 storyline missions, which of course I'll be doing very, very soon and I think those are going to be very exciting. Now for, the, for these missions, this ship will perform very good and you aren't going to have any problems at all in clearing those missions. The only problem that you will encounter are the frigates, which might take less damage because of the missiles, but besides that, you are going to be clearing these missions very efficiently with this Caracal. And if I'm not mistaken, the Caracal, currently the most popular ship in the game, I see these Caracals literally everywhere, and there are Caracal navies flying around everywhere because these ships are very, very good for these missions. Now speaking of PvP, I'll be doing PvP with this ship and I think it will be very interesting to see how this ship will perform. But for that I do need to get uh, for that I do need to get faction missile launchers and I do need to get other faction modules to improve my DPS or should I say to maximize my damage output on this ship since this is a expensive ship and I sure do not want to lose it. And I use the mic I will use the micro warp drive in PvP because it offers very good speed bonus and it can help me in engaging or disengaging a target at a certain situation and in a certain moment. Now which targets I will choose? Well, uh, it the same rule applies as with the Talvar. I'll be I'll be mostly finding ships that are up to tier 6, maybe up to tier 7, it depends. So I'll be mostly trying and I'll be mostly uh, fighting ships that are around the same tier level as the one that I am currently flying. Now in PvP you can also use the medium missile launchers, the normal ones with the long range, because then in that case you can shoot targets from a distance and by the time they reach you they are probably going to be destroyed so you can even use this ship in long-range PvP combat since it also works that way as well and of course in fleets this ship is going to be very effective and very powerful and these ships do offer fantastic fleet performance which I will be curious to test out when when I get the chance to but at the moment I am still uh, farming isk, I still need a lot of isk for the various modules that I need and of course for the various ships that I need and of course I need those modules to 
ensure that I can do the storyline missions in a decent time frame and of course that will ensure that I can complete the storyline missions without any problems. Especially once I start to do the tier 10 ones where I need to have very very long range in order to prevent the ship from taking damage from the elite battleships. Now, I'll be honest, I am kind of nervous to fight these tier 10 battleships since I can bet that one of those can literally destroy my whole shield in like one shot or one missile since I did see a lot of I did see a lot of these elite ships do a lot of damage and I also remember taking a lot of damage from the battle cruisers and cruisers so it will be interesting to see what will happen and how I will complete these missions and of course I am also after that reward they do give a lot of isk and well since I do need isk at the moment I will be doing these missions and this ship so far will allow me to do that quite efficiently now I will also be flying most of the navy ships and I did see requests for the I think for, uh, for the MOA and for the thorax and these ships are already uh, in my plans to fly and these ships are going to make an appearance on the channel very soon since those ships are one of the I think they're also iconic for the game and I'll be recording those ships as well okay uh, I think this will be the last wave now that elite frigate I have to say that elite frigate was a problem and it took me quite a while to it took me quite a while to actually take out that frigate because that frigate does have a small signature radius and it is fast and these medium missiles will have lower damage output on these frigates and that is normal if I had the rapid missile launchers then the damage output on the frigates would be a lot greater and the frigate would die a lot faster and of course when the time comes and when I have the faction rapid missile launchers then I think I'll be having a decent 40 or 50 km range and in that case I'll be using those missiles in the storyline missions because I think 50 km range is quite nice and it should be enough to clear those missions without a problem. Now of course that th that needs testing and I will test that out as soon as I can. But at the moment <coughs> I do need this and I'll be doing a lot of these missions in the background of course and I'll be getting these I'll be getting these modules as fast as possible since I do need them and they will make my gameplay a lot easier. Well, the last two ships that are on the field. Now, so far you can see that the ship is offering very good performance and even with these even with these Mark V modules that I use, I am still clearing those missions very effectively. And I guess this makes the Caracal Navy one of the one of the best ships for PvE and one of the best ships for missions in general since this ship does offer fantastic performance and its price is justified by by its performance in combat and I am quite curious to see how the other navy ships work now the next navy ship that I do have plans for is the Staber Navy since that ship is also one of my personal favorites back in the day I used to fly one and I did have a couple of these when they were quite rare and of course when they were quite expensive and currently one of these ships is at around I think 17 million isk which is also rather expensive but I think it will be very interesting to see how those will perform as well and I think a couple more missiles should should do the job against that battlecruiser now these battlecruisers aren't a problem since they aren't the elite battlecruisers the elite battlecruisers can be very scary 
and they are very dangerous as you will see when I start to do these storyline missions with this ship and there we go that was the that was the last opponent well uh, that was a very very interesting and a very long mission and it was worth to do these missions since they do give a lot of risk and I have to say so far I am very satisfied with this ship's performance and so far uh, I am convinced that this is the best navy ship in the game for, of course for the general purpose for PvP and PV it should be the best and I, I'm going to be very curious at testing out the other navy ships in the game with that being said I hope that you enjoyed it's a pleasure to play this game for you and with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.